Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 791 for April 13th, 2024, and I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. This week, our guest is Bart Bouchotts, but this is a light version of Chit Chat Across the Pond, right, Bart? Yeah, I thought I'd blow blow the dust off the light feed. Um, well, and <laughs> someone was out enjoying themselves with an eclipse and wasn't in the mood for doing homework instead. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. And you've picked a topic that is a huge passion of mine as well. So I think this is going to be fun. And what's really weird is I didn't know we were fellow travelers in the way of Dyson, which is a very British company. So I, I didn't I didn't realize there were a big thing over there. Oh, huge. I'm on my uh, fifth or sixth device from them. So, oh, wow. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah, so I, despite being 40-something, what is it, 2024, 20, 44 years old, I have only in my entire life purchased one vacuum cleaner until a few weeks ago and now have purchased two vacuum cleaners. And the first one was a Dyson V10, it turns out. I thought it was a V8, but it turns out it was a V10 because the V8 looked very different in the pictures. But anyway, I've had it for so many years and... I don't know, you guys probably don't know the TV show Only Fools and Horses. It's, it's a BBC show. Mm-hmm. It was fantastic comedy. But there was a character who quipped at his retirement that he'd had the same broom his entire career working for the council. It's like, I've only had 10 new heads and 10 new brushes, but I've had the same broom all this time. And so it's, <laughs> you know, the character's name was Trigger. And so everyone talks about Trigger's broom. So when I say it to colleagues in work, oh, yeah, my vacuum cleaner is Trigger's Hoover. They all laugh because they know exactly what I mean. But I kept that thing, you know, I replaced the battery when it started to have low battery life. I bust a few heads because they would get stuck under something and I would yank them out and that was not a good idea. Uh, You know, you would break things as one does, but you just go to the Dyson website, you go to spares and you type in your model and you go, oh yeah, I'll have one of those, please. And it would work. Actually, let me let me make a much better suggestion for the audience. Don't go to the Dyson website to order spares. Go to the interwebs and find them for way, 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 way less money. Dyson's cost an arm and a leg and a kidney, uh, <laughs> but we keep I keep buying them, uh, but they do fail. And we've been able to buy all kinds of cool parts up to and including batteries for like a battery's 40 bucks. You can save a $300 vacuum for $40. So... Uh, definitely buy parts, buy heads, buy attach wall attachments, everything, buy it third party because it's way cheaper and they work just fine. Cool. I guess, and because they've kept their connectors so standard for so long, I guess there's no reason third parties can't, Across right? all the devices too, yeah. yeah. But they don't make the batteries the same. Um, and I'll, I'll do an anecdote about something that just happened to us recently once you get started, but uh, uh, the battery thing is just really user hostile. It really yeah. is what they've done. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, so my only experience was that my, my one was so old that when I needed to replace my battery, I had to use a screw. Now, it was one screw. Yes. But I did actually need to have a screw. And now apparently uh, the later versions of the V10 have a replaceable battery. So I discovered. Hmm. So apparently. They, I have V8. They so yeah, it's it's uh, three screws. Three? Oh, three whole screws. Uh, so... <laughs> I knew for a fact when I, so I finally broke, broke my, my V10. Um, they, they, there are, I guess I could have bought a new motor, but at that stage I was like, no, well, no, that is the vacuum cleaner. That so I maybe I should upgrade at this point. But yeah, I, I basically, I dropped it and smashed the housing and it still oh. worked for a month, but it became more and more and more unreliable as all of the parts on the inside became less and less where they were supposed to be. Laser. <laughs> and eventually, yeah. uh, every time I'd move forward, it would cut out and then pull back and it would start up again. So as I was hoovering, I'd be like, vroom, 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 vroom. It was, <laughs> yeah, OK, it's, it's, it's time. But I knew I now, wanted to Did you think dozen. at all about, well, now why? Uh, because yeah. they're, they're really, really expensive. Yeah, but they fit my, my philosophy on tech so well, right? Because I like, why do I like Apple products? You know, I, I'm not an Apple fan because I'm an Apple fan, I'm an Apple fan because they fit with my philosophy, which is I really appreciate things that are well designed. Like I, I like some people appreciate a nice painting. I appreciate nice design. It makes me happy. And mm-hmm. Dyson's are of that same school. It always strikes me that when you watch a documentary about design, you know for a fact Johnny Ive is going to be one of the people they talk about, right? You, that's just a given. They're going to talk about Johnny Ive, they're going to talk about the iMac, they're going to talk about the iPod. They're almost certainly going to talk about Braun, which is sort of where Johnny Ive learned everything from and the Bauhaus school in Germany. 
And the third company that comes up in almost every documentary is Dyson. Because they think very differently about design. And they don't have a giant big lot of products. Like they have a vacuum cleaner. They have a fan with no blades. Which Which is I did magic. a review of. So you should have known I was in the Dyson family. I did a That's big true. review of that. That I can I can run my fan in the summertime when it's 80 degrees in my room before I had air conditioning. And I could I could blow air right on me and you guys couldn't hear it over my microphone. Because yeah. it is magic. It, see, yeah. for me, it's not so much the design from an aesthetic standpoint as it is from a um, uh, from a, an engineering standpoint. It's oh, the engineering completely. behind having a fanless, not not the look and feel, but the the engineering behind it. Oh, so for me, the look isn't. It's it's not skin deep. My love of good design. It's someone. It's you know that feeling when something just works, and you go, someone thought about this. Someone put a lot of effort into making sure that this thing works as well as it does. Because it's how well it works is what I love, rather than how it necessarily looks. So, you know, to me, that's the true nature of design. They're also, you know, Apple and Dyson are also both by pretty charismatic people, right? James Dyson is a fairly interesting character. I don't know if you've ever... He used to do his own advertisement here in, in Britain. He would be the one on the television telling you about the latest Dyson vacuum cleaner. And he would be mm. showing you the engineering and stuff and he would be standing in the lab. He, he was very Steve Jobsian in the fact that he was the CEO and the head tech guy. And he was a product, like he is a product guy. So, you know, like, so that kind of, they have that in common as well. But again, I prefer to spend a fair amount of money infrequently and have something that I like. I buy laptops that I use for six, seven years. That, you, only, you can only do that with an Apple laptop. You know, it's... See, I I actually put uh, Dyson more in the camp of Ember. I love them so much, and they fail really quickly. I have bought, huh. like I said, five or six. That's because they have failed, and that's you know, in the time you've had one, I've had five or six. They wow parts disappear. It's I had a part disappear from my from my vacuum cleaner. I do not understand how that happened. <laughs> it was a big one of the big stand up ones, and one day I w wasn't working right, and I looked at I'm like isn't there supposed to be a part here? And a friend of mine has the same vacuum. So yeah. we did the probably the first FaceTime between two vacuums where I, I had her point at the same part and said, do you have something there? And she goes, yeah, I do. I don't know. I mean, it was a big piece of plastic. And I, I ordered a new part from Dyson and they didn't actually charge me as much as you would think. It was like $19 and then the vacuum worked again. I don't know. Yay. And that same vacuum, Ish. eventually like this greasy black stuff started oozing out of the bottom and got all over mm. everything. And that failed. I've had the little the little ones like the V10 uh, die on me. I don't know. Oh. I don't have good luck with them, but I keep buying them because I love them. Interesting. So the other thing I should we should say uh, is that what Dyson built their company around was their the big idea James Dyson had, which was, I want a vacuum cleaner that has the same suction from the moment you start to the moment you finish and that has no consumables. There should be nothing that you have to throw away. Mm, and so yeah. the dirt collects in a hopper and his corporate overlords, before he went off on his own, were like, you can't make it see-through. People shouldn't know about dirt. It's the dirty oh, secret yes, of their house. Oh, yes, we should. That's the and best he, part. Absolutely. And he basically went, I don't care what your focus group says. I don't care what you think. We're making it see-through. And when they asked people afterwards, it was like, no, it's the best thing ever. I love well, the I fact that I can about see my it. Mom, my mom's old vacuum when I was a kid growing up, I think we've emptied it like twice a year. I open this, I vacuum this. I mean, I, I can knit a cat out of what I get out of my <laughs> carpet in, a, in it from a week, you know? Right. Maybe even just the downstairs would be one cat and the upstairs would be the other There's cat. Two cats. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's it's really satisfying. You feel like there was a reason to do it. You know, you yeah. feel gratified that you did good work. Yeah. And then on the other end, you have the filter, which is just rinsable. Twice a year or so, mm -hmm. it, I get a little light that says, you know, little icon means the filter needs to be rinsed. You run it under the tap. Yeah. It, the, the instructions actually say to leave it in the sun, but that is optional. Um, you could just leave it out and it will still dry. <laughs> um, and then 24 hours later, your vacuum is good to go again. And so I've owned I, you it. You know, none of mine have ever told me to uh, clean out the filter. I have done that, but I've never had one that had a light on it. I'm going to break in with my story about mm -hmm. the uh, about the battery because it really matters here. So I found a Dyson V8 on the side of the road outside of a construction site. 
but it had all right. the parts. It had the the charger. It had the wall mount. It had the it had the stick and the the head and everything. And so I thought, you know, I wonder if it just needs a new battery. And so I have an I have a V8. So I I painstakingly took the three screws out, removed the battery over the other one, and it wouldn't go in. Between the V8, I think mine is like a allergenic, and this was V8 something else. They switched the the little uh, probe that goes into it. They did a mirror reflection of it. So Whoa. it's the exact same battery with just a slightly different piece of plastic inside for how it lines up. And that was the user hostile part. But yeah. for 40 bucks, I ordered this, Steve ordered this battery. It came with the three screws. It came with a screwdriver. It came with two brand new filters. Oh. So this one that had been through the construction site, I just threw the filters away and put in these clean new ones and it works like a champ. Right, yeah, no, because, you know, the first time I noticed there was a light about the filter was when we moved house and there was cement dust everywhere. And cement dust mm. is just the evilest thing ever. So I bet you that vacuum cleaner from the, the, the construction oh, it needed site. Was, yeah. I had to wash the inside of the hopper. Like, I mean, Gosh. it was disgusting. It was really bad. But I uh, I thought Lindsay needed another vacuum. And I uh, and I called her up and I said, how many Dyson vacuums do you have? She's got a huge house upstairs, downstairs. And yeah. she said, I have two, no, three Dysons. It's like, oh, man, because her mother-in-law got a new one and down and sent gave her her older one. So they all, also have two. So now I have a $300 Dyson vacuum. I got to figure out what to do with, but I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> Mine will fail eventually. You know? Well, that's true. Keep a spare. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, well, after I years. I already have two. So I have an upstairs and downstairs one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I feel under, I feel underrepresented now. I need more Dysons, clearly. Yes, you do. Um, although with COVID, I bought myself their air purifier. So they have an air purifier designed for oh, one person yeah. and you sit in a bubble of filtered air and it works like it's magic. You move your head and you're out of the bubble and say, like, ooh, this is icky air. And then you move your head and you're in the bubble and say, like, ooh, this is good air. Because I was terrified <laughs> of going back into the office. But my little personal, mm. little, my little personal space of cleanliness just hangs over my desk it's, and it's still there because I got <laughs> so used to having high quality air that's Fresh not full of carpet air. gunk. Yeah, it's like, well, I don't care about the pandemic being over. This is just nicer. So my, yeah, my Dyson yeah. still sits on my desk in work and the better half has serious respiratory issues. So we have the really big air freshener, the, the one that's like two foot tall. Again, it's a fanless fan and air purifier and humidifier. Oh. And is it that also, the Dyson? Yeah. And, it, and oh, okay. it pivots and stuff. So it's designed to be freestanding in the middle of the room. So it's, you know, it's like six, not six foot, it's like four foot tall. So, you know, to my chest kind of height. And it does the whole pivoty thing and everything. And it tells you what particles it filtered out. So you know how much better the air is. And, you know, nice. and it ramps up. That's only because yes. he couldn't put a clear, he couldn't put a clear hopper in there for you to see the, the, the credits right. out of the air, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's actually kind of nice to know what gunk is in the Irish air. So, you know, how yeah. much of it is pollen, how much of it is house dirt. And actually a big difference of moving house, we have no carpets in our new house. And his Dyson has so much less work to do because we don't have carpets. Mm. Or we have very, very, very few carpets, I should say. So anyway... I bought my Dyson years ago. We lived in a rented house. There was carpets everywhere. And we had a cat. So when I bought that Dyson, I bought the the model for pets. Because, you know, they, they, you can buy just the vacuum cleaner or they give you like these bundles where you have like all the bits and bobs. Yeah. And so they had one labeled pet. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So I went with the pet one. And it turns out I didn't use any of the attachments. But, you know, basically they have a brush head, which is a spinny thing with brushes on it that's designed for any floor. And it works on carpets, it works on hardwood floors, it just works everywhere. And so that was basically all I ended up using and the yoke for getting in the corners. That was it. Basically, I used those two <laughs> things for the whole time I had the vacuum cleaner. But now we moved house. So did, and, go on. did you buy another V10? Well, no. So I decided if I'm going to buy my second ever vacuum cleaner in my entire life, I'm going to buy the best thing Dyson have now. That, that's, uh, and I sort of I expected to find one that sucks more. Right, I thought it will suck more with a longer battery life, and it might have some <laughs> smart bits. That that was my expectation, and those three things are true. It is a little bit smarter. It does suck more, and it does have a longer battery life. But 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 so my needs have changed. No more cats because it turns out that when you have respiratory issues, a pet is a terrible idea. No matter how charming and adorable they are, no matter how much I miss them, no more pets. And when we bought our own house, we got to choose what was on the floor. And because we have so many respiratory issues, the only place we have carpet is in, I don't know if this is a word Americans use, we have the stairs and the landing. You ever hear of a landing? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. so cool the stairs song. and the landing are carpet, and only because my brother, who's in the building industry, convinced me that it was a terrible, terrible idea to have stairs with anything but carpet, because you will kill yourself, you will slip and fall, and you will die. So I very reluctantly said, fine, there will be carpet on the landing and the stairs. But there is tile floors in the bits that get, you know, like the kitchen and the, the downstairs hall, and beautiful spruce wooden floors everywhere else in the house. So... My need for carpet is very, very minimal and my need for hardwood floors is very, very high. But again, the generic brush head was mostly fine. It did have a habit of pushing the popcorn around on the hardwood floors instead of sucking it up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah. like you, I have a popcorn It does that with cat thing. litter. It, gr it grabs the cat litter and flings it back. So you have to Ooh. keep going back over and over again. It's a, it's a, one, of my, one of my little complaints. Yeah, so I have a lot of tiles and I have been taking care of those tiles the old fashioned way with a mop and elbow grease and the hardwood floors, the instructions from the manufacturer were to clean them with a damp cloth every few weeks. So I have been literally on my hands and knees with floor wipes. Uh, so anyway, I went to the Dyson website going, I wonder what's new. They have a new vacuum cleaner, the V15S Wait, uh, something submarine. What's the second? S not sense. Uh, detect submarine. And Submarine? Huh. Its two new tricks are, it has a special attachment for hardwood floors and an attachment to mop floors. Oh, it's no way. It's a wet and dry vacuum. So the two things I needed mm. are exactly the two things. So the detect is the smart bit. So... The detect means it now knows how much of different sizes of dirt it's pulling up. So all of the V15s now do this detect thing. And so at the back of it, you now have a little bar chart and you have big dirt, medium dirt and little dirt. And the little bars go up and down depending on what you're pulling up. <laughs> and the default mode, so you used to have three power modes, right? High, medium, low. And you would basically choose which one you wanted depending on how much battery life you wanted. Now the default mode is auto. And it ramps the power up and down depending on the size of the dirt. So when you find when you run across big dirt, like say at the front door where we all walk with our dirty shoes, you hear it go, Woo! and then when it doesn't have much dirt, it ramps itself right back. And so the battery life now lasts for ages, and I don't have to worry about it because it just manages it magically. And I get to look at how many million particles of dirt it picked up, which is vaguely interesting. Apparently, big dirt is a big thing here. Anyway, um, but so, yeah, the so one of the um, I, I got one in between, and I actually don't remember the model number, but it doesn't do any of this fancy stuff. But it's a um, uh, it does change pitch when it's going on. I've got tile and carpet, and when I go back and forth off of them, you can tell that it's it's ramping up and ramping down for the basically for the load, not based on what kind of dirt it's finding though. This is based on the surface that it's working on. Huh. Like, oh, I need to really work hard on the carpet. Um, I do want to make one quick interlude here. No yeah. matter what Dyson vacuum you buy, do not buy the one with the bigger hopper. So oh. I did. I had a choice of the regular size hopper or a bigger one. I thought, bigger's better, right? You can hold more stuff. Turns out it's really unwieldy. It's really heavy. Oh. And it's hard to maneuver because the chamber is literally twice as long in, in, uh, right, right, in length, right. not in diameter. Same diameter, but twice as long. So now it's just harder. And I, in fact, I had Steve switch in so that my main vacuum is going to be the, the little one, not the big one now. Yeah. And I guess I always empty it every time. I, I just, right. it, to me, it's just part of the thing, right? You, you finish up, you empty yeah. it in the, in, the, in the trash can, and then you stick it on its little mount, and then it charges up again for next time. So yeah, I've never felt I needed a bigger hopper. So that's a really good point. Because yeah, portable good, you know, it's portable <laughs> right, good. Right, right, right. Anyway, um, I would like to point out that, can we tell them the price of the vacuum cleaner that you're talking about as we keep going? Do you know, I've actually wiped it from my mind, but the link is in the show notes. How much did in I pay? US dollars, it's almost $1,000. I, 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 yeah, that sounds about right. About 800 euro or something, was it? Seven ninety nine. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at the US store. But the, it's interesting to think that people still, even looking into that, once you've owned a Dyson, it's sort of like, a, with, like you said, with a Mac, you look at the price, you go, oh, that's expensive, but I'm going to use it for a long time. Yeah, divide by number of years and it, it's fine. Um, you know, so second vacuum cleaner in entire life. Yeah, I, I think I'm doing okay. Um, but yeah, actually, before we go into the really cool new stuff, I guess the other thing is, so everything the old one did, this one does. Every reason I love the old one, I love this one. But it has two things it just does better, just even if you don't get the submarine version, even if you just get the, the plain old v, V15 Detect. So they've mm -hmm. made the brush head 
so that it makes a better seal on the floor so I don't need to use the little corner tool anymore. When I run that brush head to the edge of the wall, it picks up all the dirt right to the edge. Oh, I don't know how, nice. but yay, <laughs> right? Because I used to remove yeah. everything and then change the head and then do all the edges. Well, I don't have to do that anymore. So yay, thank you. Um, the other thing is all of the brush heads now say tangle proof or tangle resistant or something like that. I am married to someone with long hair. I spent so much time. I would do three things. I would empty the, the, empty the hopper, pull the hair out of the brush, and then charge it. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> I don't know how. Oh, you're saving a lot of time. So you're not on your hands and knees mopping. Yeah. You're not having to change heads to do the corners. And you're not having to pull the hair out. Yeah. And I don't know how it doesn't catch hair, but it doesn't. It all ends up in the hopper now. And it just ends up in the bin. Which is fine, because that's where I put it anyway when I was done. But I used to have to pull right. it out, and now it just goes straight into the bin. So, yay. So, and the other thing is the user interface, is a, which was already very simple, is now even simpler. There's no more lights and stuff. There's one screen on the back. So, you know the way the motor obviously spins around an axis? So, at the end of the axle mm -hmm. is now our circular screen. And right, it tells you right. what it needs to tell you. So if it's running low on battery, it tells you the battery. When you plug it in, it tells you the battery. When you're using the mop attachment, it tells you how much water you have left. So it kind of tells you what you need. And otherwise, it just shows you the bar chart of what size of dirt you're picking up. And it has so one button. So my bar chart has has three uh, three levels of... Uh, it's got eco, middle, and turbo boost or something in the middle. Mm. So mine is eco, auto, turbo. Okay. So I can't say stay in the middle setting. I can only say pick for yourself, go softly or go very hard. And the one small piece of carpet we have in our house is really, really fluffy carpet because I wanted, you know, where do you walk barefoot? Between the bedroom and the bathroom. So that's where mm -hmm. I have the fluffiest carpet. Um, and if the vacuum is set to full power, it pulls, it bugs itself into the carpet to the point where it becomes like a workout to push it. So <laughs> I put it to eco for the carpet and then I put it back to auto. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's all I ever do. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, there's one button and you tap the button to change the mode. And if you need to go into the menu, which I did once when I bought the vacuum cleaner, it's press and hold, press, press and hold, press. So it's mildly awkward to do the thing you do once ever. But other than that, all you're going to do is change the modes and just tap, tap, tap. So it's it's very, very pleasant. And instead of having to know the little icon for a please wash my filter, it'll just tell you on the screen what it wants you to do or not do or what, it, you know, if it wants your attention, it'll just tell you what it wants, which is nice. So that's the normal stuff. And all of the V15s will do that. But then we come to the optional extras that I decided to go with, with the Detect Submarine, which sounds like some sort of sonar system from World War II to me. But anyway, so in that bundle, you get two magic tricks. So the first magic trick is designed for hardwood floors. And they call it a slim... Hang on, I get the fancy pants name for it. It has lasers, which is why I love it. But they, they call it the Laser Slim Fluffy Cleaner Head. So I think okay. they went to I think they went to now, the what, got, what is what is so the this, laser for? The laser is to show you the dirt. It's a green laser that runs ahead of the vacuum cleaner along the floor. Oh. And honest to goodness, I can't tell when I'm standing up on my hardwood floor with a grain on it where I haven't haven't been. With that laser, oh oh wow can I tell. Oh wow can I tell oh, where I have and haven't been. And oh goodness me, do I know when it's been too long since I last vacuumed. It is astonishing <laughs> how much lint and cruft can be hiding on a textured surface like a hardwood floor, right? With those wood grains and stuff, you don't see the gunk, but the laser just illuminates it. And it's, it's very pleasing because everywhere you've been is, you know, the laser picks up nothing, right? You don't even see the laser because it's not glinting off anything. And then you move to the bit you haven't been to. It's like, oh, wow, yeah. So it's great. And it's also the slimline bit's important. It's way, 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 way lower profile than the brush head. So oh, it goes under so your you couches under and things. Yeah. So when you're cleaning the sitting room in particular or the bedroom under the beds and stuff, it really gets in under there again. No need for the edging, no need for the little edge thing because you're getting right in under it with the this laser slimline contraption, which is fantastic. And instead of being a brush, it's got like a felt roller. 
So it's giving your floors a nice mm. little, little gentler little scrub. And it has little, so it's like a felt roller with little brushes and the little brushes get into the gap between the hardwood floors and the felt is giving your hardwood floors a little polish. And okay. I think there's a static electricity thing happening because it doesn't push the dirt around. It actually catches it. And it's the same hardwood floor. So if the brush was pushing my popcorn away, why would this be catching it? And I'm assuming it's because of static electricity, because it seems to magically just pull everything towards it. Well, it's Maybe. sucking, isn't it? Well, sure, but so was the other one. So right. it's But the other one was whisking at it. This is not whisking at it, right? It's not but it's still sm- a smacking thing. it. But it's still oh, a it is. I don't I don't know that. You did you just said it's a mat. Well well right. I so it, it a it's a roller, too. but instead of it being the big sticky outy brushes, it's a it's a felty roller. Okay. Okay. Well maybe the, I think the, the, the whiskers just smack it and make it whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. maybe that's what, that's what it's I, I don't know to me. why it's very effective but i know that it's very effective so <laughs> and the laser is just cool i just love the laser so that, that already is cool but the real party piece is no more mopping so the submarine head is so well designed so you have a water hopper at the front that's obvious and you fill that with clean water and it has a round spinny head, like you would expect, which is made of a sort of a mop-like material, which sits on a heater. And inside it, there's a little scraper. And that takes the water off the top of the mop head and into an inside reservoir where the dirty water goes. So as you're mopping, you have your clean water reservoir gets lower and lower and lower. And there's an equal sized reservoir inside the mop head where the dirty water is collecting. This and is all down on the head, not up on the All handle. on the head. All 100% oh. on the head. So everything oh. happens in the head. Huh. And as you're going, the, the heater is heating up the water. So it dries stupendously quickly behind you. You don't have like puddles of water on the floor. I mean, it, it, it's noticeably wet for a couple of minutes, but it is just two or three mm-hmm. minutes that it's notably wet and then it's all dried up. Okay. And you watch your, your clean water go down. And you don't see the dirty water until you finish when you empty the inside reservoir and you and it's admire. Equally satisfying to the hopper. <laughs> equally satisfying to the hopper. And then you just rinse it out. And again, the, the roller mm. bar comes straight out very, very, very easy. You can't you literally can't get it wrong. It doesn't fit wrong. Like all the things. It, mm-hmm. it, it, there is no wrong. And again, the icon says put it in the sun, but it works in Ireland too. So you just let it dry for a day. <laughs> It makes me laugh every time. The little picture of the sun in 24 hours. It says sun 24H. I was like, well, I wonder how. Um, maybe it's maybe it's 32H for me, but either way, it still works. And you just leave it out. And so because it's more of a moist clean than a wet clean, I am perfectly comfortable using it on the hardwood floors once a month. So, mm. you know, because you do want to give them a, a, a sort of a more thorough clean than you're going to get with with the, the the soft, fluffy, whatever head it was called. So I've been using I've been using the 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 wet head on the hardwood floors and it's absolutely fine and because it dries so quickly you really don't feel like you're endangering your hardwood floors it it really is so I am just so pleased that I don't have to get down on my hands and knees anymore I don't have to mop the floor anymore and it's just so well thought out I just feel like I've had such an upgrade in the <laughs> 10 15 years since I bought the last one it's it's huge but I do want to say there is one thing that they have made a little bit less nice. So when I bought the last one, I bought an optional charging stand, which is this thing you plug into the wall and it has a cradle at the top where you clunk in the, the, right. the main body to charge it up. And it had connectors like the ones at the bottom of the, the wand, but they were just all over this thing. And you just click all of the heads all over this stand. And so you just had this tree of heads. Right. There is a stand. So I have a new charging stand. It's a different stand. And the the mount is now spring-loaded, so you don't have to be really, really exact. It's on a little swivel, and it likes to be upright, but it will happily swivel, so it's way easier to put it in and out, which is cool. There is one clip where the wand goes. So you can clip the wand with one default head. All the rest is now your problem. So so we bought a uh, a third-party bracket that goes across the top of the the standard mount and we can add like six more little heads 
Oh, I'll have to find send me the link. link to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to figure out where Steve bought that. Uh, but yeah, it's a little janky because it's not exactly right. And it kind of it kind of slopes down a little bit like you'd like it to be stiff and straight. And it's a little <laughs> bit janky, but but it works. It holds all the, the stuff off the uh, off the floor or out of a, you don't have to have it in a box or something like that yeah so at the, at the moment you and i also share a love of the ikea kalaxa series so one of my square boxes in the kitchen now has a basket in it which is full of dyson heads but i would much okay, well prefer, maybe we could get those on the wall <laughs> yeah exactly i would much prefer to have them on the wall that would be perfect yeah next, behind the church stand and then everything is perfect again and i can get back one of my boxes because I want it for other things. I have many things to store. <laughs> but yeah, I on the whole, I, I just sort of feel like I got years and years of, and I genuinely liked my V10. Like, I, I shouldn't like a vacuum cleaner, but honest to goodness, I, I liked it. <laughs> and I Do you ever really think about when you were, when you were, you ever think when you were a kid that you would, you would grow up to like a vacuum cleaner? You would really like, care about something like a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I read no, you know, because it was a thing that you were forced to do against your will. But when you have your own place, you feel very differently about cleaning. Cleaning is not a chore. Cleaning is, is something that you enjoy the result of. You may not enjoy doing right. it, but you enjoy shortly after. Shortly, you get after. the benefits, right? <laughs> yeah. In the case of the well, Irish know, weather. This thing seems to take care of an awful lot of different problems. It's it's not just a vacuum cleaner, right? right. It's a lot more than that. The floor cleaner. That's got me thinking. Now I'm jonesing for another uh, another Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you have more than carpet in the house, honest to goodness, it really works. It's we have tile, and the tile oh, yeah. the the grout in the tile is just it's such a nightmare to keep clean. So it's uh, we mop it, but you know. I have a story about my grout. So when when the guy came to to ask me how I wanted my tiles laid, he said, do you want white grout or grey grout? And I said, what colour grout would look least grotty over time? Oh, the grey stuff. You'll never tell it's dirty or not. I said, grey grout. So So when I had, uh, when we remodeled our house and had all kinds of new tile put in, I told the guy, I said, I want dirt coloured grout. (laughs) <laughs> and they laid in the grout and it wasn't. And I made him take it out. I said, no, you can't wow. give me white grout. I'm not going to. I told you dirt colored grout. I was that. That's a memorable phrase. I'm sure you remember me yeah. saying that. And so, uh, yeah, I now have dirt colored grout, but it still looks worse than when we got it. Still not the same. Uh, aged, Alison. It looks aged, like a good pair of jeans. Yeah, but it's it's not linearly, or, you know, it's not that's uh, true. Uniformly Uniform. aged. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, that is that is. Why do we sound like a couple old people? (laughs) Yeah, when you spill coffee on it, no matter it's it's dirt colored, not coffee colored. Some things will stain it. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Coffee's the worst, (laughs) and the best. You know, for drinking and for for staining. Yes, but anyway, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I wanted to share the fact that I have lasers and submarines in my vacuum cleaner. (laughs) Yep, yours is cooler than mine. Now I want another one, Bart. This was still fun. I, I think uh, this was perfectly appropriate for dusting off the Chit Chat Across the Pond light feed. No pun intended whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Right. Well, well, until next time, which I think is going to be much more business as usual, lots and lots of happy computing. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad-supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeed podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeed.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeed at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other Nocilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeet.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.